that what we do is, is very important because what we're doing is not simply delivering solidarity to the Palestinians. And I, do, I don't in any sense want to underplay the importance of solidarity because I think we are at a moment where there's a very real opportunity to build a qualitatively different movement of solidarity with the, with the Palis, Palestinians. So solidarity is really important. But the issue is about more than solidarity. The issue is about the fact that people in Palestine and people in Egypt are, like people here in Britain, fighting the same system. And you see it if you look at the top of the ruling classes. I didn't know the figure about the, uh, the, the rich of the Middle East losing, what was it, $2 trillion or something like that in the credit crunch. This shows how closely these people are interwoven. It shows how fused the different ruling classes are. It shows how much they're part of the same boss's system. So what we do here to hit at those bosses and to hit at their system and to begin to develop a movement that can win socialism here, that can get rid of capitalism here, what we do here in fighting capitalism is a real and direct contribution to the struggle for liberation in the Middle East. which was raised by Shirley, um, where she said rightly that you can't simply treat solidarity with the struggle in South Africa and solidarity uh, with the Palestinians as identical issues because of the issue of anti-Semitism, the Holocaust and so on and so forth. And she's right. There, there is a difference. If we want to understand the historical roots of Zionism, it lies in a particular political project that responded to anti-Semitism by saying Jews and Gentiles can't coexist, so what we're going to have to do is found our own, own state. And the logic of working out how to find their own state then, the, then led the Zionists into collaboration with the dominant imperialist power in the region, first the Ottomans, then the British, and, and finally, in all sorts of ways I hope, the United States. United States, but also to a project on the ground that meant settler, settler <coughs> colonialism. But, and, and the Holocaust comes in both as a way in which a lot, of, a lot of people to help found the State of Israel were provided for, fleeing the, 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 what they had suffered and what their people had suffered in Europe, but also critically to the ideological justification. For, for is Israel is that, that is constantly, repetitively used by Zionist um, de, de, defenders of Zionism and defenders of Israel. Now, I think it's important to um, it's important to recognise that and to avoid the mistake that opponents of Zionism, and I think this is particularly true in the Arab world, sometimes make of um, um, dis, dismissing the, the Holocaust or even you know much worse trying to claim that the Holocaust didn't happen, and so on and so forth. So, I think, for example, that it's a huge mistake on the part of the Muslim Council of Britain to boycott <coughs> Holocaust Day, as they did again today. Not, not in any sense that the leaders of the Muslim Council of Britain are anti-Semitic or um, uh, uh, Holocaust deniers or anything like that, it, but it's a political mistake to, to do that, because it makes it easier. The reason why that they gave for not participating in Holocaust Day was because of solidarity with, with Gaza, which plays into the Zionist hands, because they say, look, you know, these, our enemies are anti-Semitic, etc., etc. It's how much more effective for Muslim leaders to go to the, on the Holocaust Day with badges saying solidarity with, with Gaza and, and defy the Zionists to do anything about that. But the other thing I think it's important to emphasise is that the, the Zionist argument, the ritual resort to the accusation of anti-Semitism, the ritual appeal to the so-called lessons of the Holocaust is becoming less and less effective over, over time. And that's not because anti-Semitism is becoming stronger, as the Zionists themselves claim. It's because of the growth of anti-imperialist internationalism. Britain, it's bizarre, this old imperial country is becoming quite an anti-imperialist country. That's what's true, that's what's happened over the past few years. And it's that anti-imperialism internationalism that we need more and more confidently to base ourselves in when we express our solidarity with the Palestinians and our opposition to, 
to, to what the Zionists are doing. I want to come to the questions of what we do. And I think there are two crucial areas here. The first is solidarity. And because um, the solidarity with, with Gaza comes out of the cumulative effect, I think, of the, the, the anti-war movement and the struggles uh, of the past few years, it's very, very important to continue building the Stop the War Coalition, to ensure that in every part of the country there's strong local Stop the War groups rooted in the local working class movement. That remains a very, very important task. But we also have to look at ways of developing solidarity with the Palestinians specifically to a high level. And that's going to involve all sorts of challenging things for people. For example, in my union, the University Lecturers Union, we've had a huge battle over passing a, a resolution at a couple of <coughs> conferences which said, let's discuss a boycott of uh, Israeli universities. I think... You know, of course, ac academics like discussing things, but I think we're going to have to put our money where our mouth is and say we should boycott the bastards. And that is, will be a tough fight. Then I'll be appealing to the solidarity of the <laughs> students as kings to come to the, to the rescue as the, the Zionists denounce academics who support the boycott and so on. So we have to take solidarity to a high level. The second thing is we have to organise against, against capitalism. And people are absolutely right. This is a very, very important historical moment. We really are confronting a system that is in deep, in deep crisis. The International Monetary Fund, which only in October 2007 was saying that the world economy was enjoying economic growth that was more stable than the growth in the golden age of the 1960s, announced yesterday that this year it expects the world economy to shrink for the first time since the 1930s. So it's official. We're in 1930s country when it comes to the economic crisis. We're confronting the worst economic crisis, um, an economic crisis that is likely to surpass the crisis of the 1970s, the 1980s, and the, and the 1990s. We're in new territory in, from, from that point of view. And therefore, after all the talk of the market and how the markets could solve all our problems and how prosperity was going to encompass the world and India and China were going to create a radically different for, for a world that was much more equal and, and so on, all that guff has gone. All that guff has gone and we're confronted with the brutal realities of a capitalist system that lurches from crisis to crisis and tries to get out of its problems at, at our expense. And in a way, Obama brings it out more clearly, more sharply, because here he is, you know, trying to give it a different tone to the whole thing. Uh, and, you know, saying we're going to listen and not just lecture and things like that. But you can, see, you can see the logic of the system binding in a certain pattern of action. So they're going to write a letter to the Iranians. This is a great breakthrough, actually writing to the, the Iranians. No, they won't write to the president because they hate it so much, but they're going to <laughs> write to the, the, the chief ayatollah. And uh, the Guardian is explaining what's going to be in the letter. And there's going to be a bit where they're go going to say, look at all the other countries in the world uh, or in the region that have developed much more economically than Iran. So where is that? Where are they? <laughs> Egypt, Dubai, you know, the, 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 you know, e the Middle East is becoming more and more a region of basket cases, but they're still trapped in this ideology that free market capitalism can solve, solve the, their problems. And Obama is as much prisoner of, of, of that as anything else. So we have to get rid of capitalism. And as people have said, for that, we need social, socialist organisation. And I'm going to repeat what's already been said. People here who've been involved in us with the different movements and struggles, you should join the Socialist Workers' Party. The social, because it's not just a question of confronting the system as revolutionary socialists, it's a question of fighting on every front. I feel very proud of our stance on Israel. We were founded by a Palestinian Jew, Tony Cliff, who was always absolutely firm in his solidarity with the Palestinians. He wanted, he had to leave uh, what was becoming Israel, and he had a choice between moving to Egypt or moving to Britain. I think he preferred to go to Egypt because of the strategic centrality of, of Egypt in the, in, the, in the region, but bad luck, he ended up in Britain. Well, it was his bad luck, but it was good luck for us. We've always been absolutely consistent on the question of Palestine. We've always fought the Nazis from the 1960s and 1970s through to the, to the present. We've been 
deeply involved in the, in the, the, the anti-war movement, in building the, the Stop the War Coalition. We've been deeply involved in the, in the recent protests. When it comes to workers' struggles, when it comes to the student occupations, we're there. We've shown in practice that we don't just talk about fighting the system, we do that every day. The problem is, there are not enough of us. We, need, we don't just need your money, we love your money, but we want you. We need more people to make us bigger, stronger, more rooted, and more able to help fight and destroy this rotten system. 